Isaiah. Isaiah was one of the major prophets of the Old Testament, and he was a prophet to the southern kingdom of Judah. Isaiah was a prophet between 740 and 680 BC. He became the uh, prophet when the king Isaiah died. After Isaiah, Jotham was king, and then Ahaz, Hezekiah, and Manasseh. And Isaiah was the prophet while all of these men were king of Judah. Now remember, the prophet is the person that takes God's message and brings it to the kings and brings it to the people. And all of the prophets, their main message was to remind the people about God's covenant with them, to tell them to stop disobeying God and to start obeying God. When they were obeying God and following the covenant, then God promised to bless them. Remember, he promised to give them uh, offspring and land and a special relationship with him. But if they did not follow the covenant, God said that he would curse them, that they would not get those special blessings, and instead they would be cut off from the land and they would not have a special relationship with him. So Isaiah is one of the prophets speaking to the southern kingdom and the southern kings saying, obey, follow God's covenant with you. Now, remember, Hezekiah was a really good king. Hezekiah restored proper worship of Yahweh in the southern kingdom. He listened to the message that Isaiah had, and he went and destroyed the high places. He said that people were only going to worship in the temple in Jerusalem where the Ark of the Covenant was. And that was a really good thing that Hezekiah did. We talked about Hezekiah last week and how Assyria was trying to attack the southern kingdom of Judah, but Hezekiah prayed and so God delivered the people. Remember, we talked about how in the Assyrian history, they did make a mention of the fact that they could have attacked Jerusalem, but they decided not to. And in the Egyptian history, it talks about the fact that there was a plague and rats came and um, made all of the Assyrian army men sick. And that's why they didn't attack. But in the Bible, we know that the story is that God protected the southern kingdom of Judah because Hezekiah was faithful. But after Hezekiah, his son Manasseh was not a good king. He put the high places back up. So now people started worshiping in the wrong place again. Isaiah's ministry was to say, stop disobeying God, stop disobeying the covenant, or something really bad will happen. And as we know, something really bad did happen. Judah was conquered by Babylon and Jerusalem, the capital city fell in 586 BC, about a hundred years after Isaiah's ministry. Isaiah's Prophecy of the Suffering Servant, from the book of Isaiah, chapters 52 and 53. While he was telling the people that God was going to punish them, Isaiah also had a message of hope for God's people. One day, someone would come and take away their sin problem. One day, someone would take their punishment completely. Isaiah says, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray, each of us has turned our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah is talking about this perfect person who will come and live a perfect life, but then take the punishment for the people's sin. That was the hope that Isaiah gave the people, even when they were going into exile. Jeremiah is another major prophet of the Old Testament. He was a prophet to the southern kingdom of Judah, and he was, wrote his book between 626 and 562 BC which means he was writing and giving his message about 50 years after Isaiah was. Jeremiah was the prophet when Josiah was the king, 
Jehoahaz was the king, Jehoiakim was the king, Jeho Jehoiakin was the king, and Zedekiah. Zedekiah was the last king of Judah before Babylon conquered Judah. Now, Josiah was a good king. If you remember, he came to the throne very young, and during his reign, they found the book of the law, the book of the covenant. And Josiah read the first five books of the Bible, the Torah or the Pentateuch. He read those books that Moses wrote and he saw for himself that God made this covenant with his people. And he realized if they stopped obeying God, God would stop blessing them. And so Josiah led the country in repenting and turning back to God and saying, God, we're sorry, please forgive us. Please keep your covenant with us. Please be faithful to us. But after Josiah, Jehoahaz, Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim, and Zedekiah were not as good kings. And God had enough with his people. He had sent prophet after prophet after prophet to warn them and to tell them to return to him, but they refused. Jeremiah, like we talked about in class, was alive when ba uh, Babylon came in and captured Jerusalem. And he wrote the Book of Lamentations as a song of mourning, a song of sadness because of what happened to Jerusalem. Jeremiah saw the worst possible thing God's people taken away, and God's temple destroyed. Jeremiah's Prophecy of the New Covenant, Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. Jeremiah gives a message that God will one day bring another king like David. Jeremiah calls him a righteous branch. God will also give a new covenant to his people, it will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, God says. He also says at that time, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. He also says, I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. God's going to be with his people again. This new king and this new covenant will be possible because of the suffering servant Isaiah described. Because this man will take away the people's sins, God will be able to make a new covenant with them and forgive them. Daniel was a prophet between 605 and 5. 35 BC. Daniel was not a prophet to the northern kingdom, and he was not a prophet to the southern kingdom, because when Daniel was a prophet, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom did not exist. Daniel was a prophet in the Babylonian captivity. Remember, when Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, came in and took over Judah, he took all of the people that lived there and he brought them back to live in Babylon. So Daniel was from Judah, but he lived most of his life in Babylon. And it's there that God spoke to him and gave him messages for God's people. Some of the people who were in power when Daniel was a prophet include Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, Darius, and Cyrus. Daniel's Prophecy of the Son of Man, Daniel 7. Daniel has a vision of four beasts. Each one represents one of the world empires who would rise to power. First, he sees a lion with wings, Babylon. Then he sees a bear, Medo-Persia. Then a leopard, Greece. Finally, an iron beast, representing Rome. Following the beasts, Daniel has a vision of God, called the Ancient of Days, seated on a throne with power. Then Daniel has a vision of a king. There before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All peoples, nations, and men of every language worshipped him. 
His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Daniel's vision was a message to God's people as they were living in Babylon. God had not forgotten about them. This forever king, this suffering servant, this son of man who would be worshipped was coming. He would come when Rome was in power, and he would fix the problem between humans and God.